Stop the violence! Stop the violence! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! On Monday, 23-year-old Tony Moody was in a car when someone walked up and fired shots. Moody died. Stop the violence! Stop the violence! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! The video recently posted online shows a brawl near Proviso East High School. Maywood police say the driver of the vehicle had been shot at in the area near 19th and Harrison shortly before losing control and crashing into the apartment building. Witnesses say the driver was slumped over the wheel. Athlete, a scholar, a man with a dream, heads off to college, has an outstanding freshman year of football, basketball. Then, Sean McCarty comes home for the summer and is shot and killed in Maywood. We should also mention that there have been multiple shootings in this exact area over the last couple of days. A homicide just yesterday. Residents tell us that a gang war is to blame for this violence. We're live in Maywood. Jay Miller. This is murder where we're all at. I was born and raised in Maywood. I don't live there now, but watching all the, the drama and the violence go on made me want to make this documentary. Only the strong survive. And I survived growing up in Maywood. My name is Aaron Peppers. I'm 45 years old. I'm a patrolman. A patrolman in Maywood. First off, my name is LB. Two letters, LB. I'm 24. This ain't out west, this ain't, this ain't out south, nigga. This maybe, nigga. It's worse, nigga. Smaller blocks, smaller town. You caught quicker. You know what I'm My name is Patrick J. Winter Sr. I'm a 47 year old black male. Maybe. Morgan Thomas, 26. Suburban murder capital. We had the National Guard out here in the early 2000s. Uh, Maywood, Maywood is only 21 blocks. I mean, from First Avenue to 21st, you know, from Roosevelt to, you know what I mean, to Lake. Growing up in Maywood was fantastic. That's why we as a, we are considered a family here in the community. Much. You know you live and you learn, you know, when you when you go through stuff and you see people out here doing wrong, you can either choose one side, you choose the good side, you choose the bad side. I was uh in the middle. You know everybody got their problems or whatever, but I made it through. They knew it had its ups and downs, you know um a lot of gangs, a lot of drugs, you know, I had a different, different element, you know, my father was a police officer, so I was, you know, having double fights, but, uh, you know, growing up in Maywood, you know, only made us stronger. Younger, you know, a lot of people was around, and more like stuff you could do without like the police stopping your fun and whatever. And like now, living here now is like you gotta be watch where you go, you can't be hanging out at all everywhere. You gotta watch the people who you with, it's way different now that we get older. Uh, 18 years ago, my nephew was killed, he was one of the first kids killed in Maywood in broad daylight. He was killed on 19th and St. Charles at approximately 11 30 in the morning. Been coaching for over 30 years, so I quite often have to stand up and speak at funerals and different stuff because I'm always losing one of the kids that I've coached or have dealt with over the past. It saddens your heart, you know. Uh, like I can say, my mind is weary and my heart is tired. You know, I'm tired of all the violence that's going on. You know, we got a lot of kids raising themselves. You know, we need to have our parents step up and take part and helping to raise our children. A lot of my friends, and especially family members, have been died over over the Maywood streets. The, the things that go on in Maywood, they they like died and not longer here, or some got their life took in the jail. So I look at it like like by First Avenue, 
You could be at the cemetery over there on first. You could be going to that courthouse to get your life taken away from you. Or you could graduate from Friesville East. All that fall on first. You know what I'm saying? First Avenue, but maybe we'll begin that. It's gonna be, it, be, it could be the beginning and the end of the cousin. He got killed in uh, broad daylight on 9th. That matters. His name was Everett Brown. He got killed by another rival gang from Maywood that this war been going on for years. And the guy that killed him, I'm pretty sure that he got kids as well as my cousin. He had kids, so by the violence on both sides, it's like every side getting really affected by it. So it really is a never ending war. We have to get programs. We have to get programs for our kids. If there's no programs for our kids to do that, leads to ministries. Bottom line is we have park districts and recreation centers that are empty. We have to fill our gyms, fill our park districts with active activities. Our poor girls don't have anything to do. There's no games out there for the girls. It's up to the community itself. I mean, the person that's actually doing the shooting, he gonna actually have to want to change. Half of these niggas out here ready to die. They want to die, die for this game, but don't want to live for their kids. And I find that hard to believe. I'm really a Maywood. Maybe you want to say this. Uh, what high school did you go to? Proviso East. That's crazy. I still remember my, my uh, ID number. It's 605431. That's crazy. They call it Maywood Murder Woods. Why they call it the Murder Woods? Man, that's the murder capital, man. That shit go down. Shit, a lot of shit go down out here, man. What high school y'all went to? East. Everybody went to Proviso East? Everybody graduated? Or y'all J.O. Murder Wolf, shout now, everybody in the town, what's happening? I fuck with what type of games do Maywood got? You got foes, you got vice lords, you got shit, you got black stones, maniac stones, you got GDs, BDs, shit, you got it all, yo. Shit, I done fall out, I got whooped, I got beat up, you know what I'm saying? I done beat up, nigga. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas got shot, niggas, and she got shot at, niggas, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. I done, I done been shot. <coughs> But it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? As far as me, as far as being in the cars, man, and, and you know what I'm saying, when it's war time, ain't no, ain't no posting, ain't no hanging out, Joe, you know what I'm saying? You might be a victim of a drive back. Ain't, ain't, ain't no posting up, ain't no hanging out on no blocks. And right now, yeah, right now. Elaborate, let them elaborate. Right now, right now, you ride through this town, it's really like a ghost town. But these cars is out here, and these niggas is out here. Let me elaborate. What do you think is like the biggest difference between your upbringing in Maywood and a lot of the upbringing for the children in Maywood now? Well, I think the biggest difference was the inflation of drugs. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it took over. I think it started in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Once crack, crack cocaine hit Maywood, it hasn't been the same. You know, because it affected the families. You know, we had the grandmothers now, they're not 50 or 60 years old. Help make it to the family. Grandmother's to step, had to step up and become a mom again. And then dads weren't being dads because of the drugs and they weren't around. So we had those families just devastated. I mean, when I grew up, you know, we had a lot of kids that I grew up with. We all had moms and dads at home. You had like one or two in your crew that just had the mom and the grandma. But as that changed, I mean, it's rare to have a mom and dad in the house now. And I can so I think that's the biggest problem in the drugs here. The families were affected and it just hasn't been the same since. Right. I think the kids today have a, they, they just feel that they they need to have something, that, that we owe them something. Mm -hmm. That they don't want to be patient and stack their bricks one at a time. Uh, they live for today, tomorrow's not promised. So everything that they do is for the right now. They're not thinking about the future. They, they don't have any respect for the elders, they don't have this respect for adults. You know, they have an entitlement problem. Like, you know, they entitled to this. You know, they won't even, uh, at the times I talk to some kids, they won't accept jobs at $11 an hour. And I'm just looking at them like, who are you? I, 
When I started off, I worked for 325 minimum wage. You know, so just stack your bricks one at a time, get the education, do the things that are necessary for you to develop as a young adult. And we're not willing to do that today. One young man named Anthony Moody, he called him Tony. He was a young man that was, uh, he was having family problems with the drugs you know, throughout his family. So at that time, when he was around 12 to 14, his family didn't step up and he was going to be up for adoption. And me and my wife, I got registered and got free screen for everything, become an adoption agency parent. And then uh, his grandmother stepped up and kept him because he was getting ready to go to Atlanta. He went to Atlanta for a year with his other family members. And when he came back, that was the time that he was going to go with us. But the grandmama stepped up, we allowed it, we didn't fight it. And I just stayed in his life. And he was like a son to me. He went to Indiana State University, graduated, came home, couldn't get a job, hanging out in the street, hanging with his cousin, and got murdered. Sergio Brown. 25. I'm a pro football player for the Indianapolis Colts. From Maywood, Maywood, Illinois, born and raised. Any other rough neighborhood, I, I, I say. Uh, a little bit of violence, drugs. But I mean, it's a lot of fun. Growing up with a lot of a lot of tough individuals, a lot of other bad football players, really shaped the mold into the man I am today. I mean, a lot of my friends got killed. Um, Every year in high school, three or four people in these class get killed. You know, a lot of shootings. I mean, I never got injured by anything like that. I stayed out the way, got got, got away when I could. You know, but um, I mean, it really opened my my, my eyes to like what I really need to do and what I really need to be staying away from to you know make me a better person and really get away from all of this. Uh, it affected me, you know, in, in a positive sense, in the sense that I, you know, I, I was a chance, I had a chance to get out. You know, I was one of those few that, that made it out. But at the same time, all mine coming back and hollering at the people that I grew up with, you know what I'm saying, and letting them know that they ain't got to stay stuck in their same position and then, you know, giving them whatever positive words that I can to try and encourage them to, you know, get out this negativity. I uh, do camps, I do free camps, uh, I come back, uh, I get a whole bunch of, you know, t-shirts and I, you know, I give them out to the kids and, you know, I did a carnival concert. So just a little stuff like that just to let them know that, you know, they still got I mean, uh, for a number of reasons, I can, you know, I can take it all the way back to you, you know, from, you know, basically. My grandma came, say she came back in the 60s when it was, um, you 
you know, Caucasians living around all these neighborhoods, then, you know, the blacks starting to flood in, tore the projects down, and, you know, it's pretty much, you know, every man for themselves out there now, they're trying to find ways to get money, and most times it's, you know, gangs, drugs, and violence, so, you know, uh, a lot of kids get caught up in being a product of their environment, but, you know, that ain't always the easy route, but, I don't, I don't, I don't hate on it, you know what I'm saying? Because I was from it, almost slipped into it with basketball, so you know what I'm The new mayor needs to take part in uh, what's going on in the community, find out, you know, what, what the danger spots out, and, and try and stop them, you know? She needs to, like, uh, get, like, a hands-on type of uh, review, and, and get out here, and, you know, and talk to the people. There's certain spots worse than others. Got a couple blocks where uh, basically in the uh, 100, well, it's, it's the 100 block on 20th Avenue. We have a big problem there, and uh, we got uh, also we got the same problem on uh, the uh, 400 block on 20 21st Avenue. And what has happened is, well, they put in the cul-de-sacs. I voted against the cul-de-sacs, and what happened is with the cul-de-sac, all you have done is allow the gang bangers and the ones that are hey you're having the problem you allow you giving them territory because they're taking over that block and it's like I own it. You don't own anything, you're not paying any rent, you're not paying any taxes. You know, your parents have died and left it or whatever your situation is or you renting or, or your parents is renting or whoever you're with. But they feel that they're entitled. You're not entitled to anything. The only thing you're entitled to is life, basically. Every ordinance that Daly put out, I brought here to the village of Maine. You can't stand on this corner. It's called lottery. And I have not asked one policeman to pick up any person for lottery. All I ask is when you come through and you see a gang of people hanging, come through, get out your car, and say, now if I come back through here, you're going to jail. Guess what? They will move. All I see motherfuckers get shot, beat up, stabbed, I all kinds of shit. Tied up. All kinds of shit. got his ears thumped in, all kinds of shit. I seen a motherfucker get through, through the window down there. Foe got killed right here on St. Charles. A couple motherfuckers got killed this man. There's so much shit I can go on, and I'm only 20, and I can tell you a 40 year story about this motherfucking bitch. Shit crazy. That's how it is around this bitch, though. There ain't shit to do around this motherfucker if you ain't hustling, playing sports, or uh, you feel me, no family man and no nigga like that. Shit, you better trap, poke you a motherfucker, get down on a motherfucker, anything to do. You feel me? Something to just be. Motherfuckers just do shit just to have shit to do. You feel me, basically. Everybody doing everything out here to get money. Basically. It's the way out here to get money. Everybody out here to get money. Some type of way. You live in the guy. You got two? You get two, you can get one. Yeah. What made your family move to Maywood? Shit. Nice houses. I mean, what the fuck? It's better than out west. You see what I'm saying? But then when you moved here, what you end up finding out? It's holes out here. And good money to be got. Hate niggas. Also smoke good money. A few other bitches a nigga ain't done tapped into yet. And a few other money sources that ain't been tapped. <laughs> got a couple pistol cases. Went to jail for, you know, robbery, goddammit, kidnapping. Temper, all type of goofy shit, goddammit. But, you know, it is what it is. Shit like that is just needed for a nigga to get some money out here. First off, back in the day, this was like, I don't know, I'm going to say, 
niggas who grow up and look up to like niggas who was just doing all the wrong shit, you know what I'm saying? You got kids everywhere gonna do that shit. Like if you grew up in the hood, you see nigga get money in the hood where you from, and you look at him like how he got that shit, he, did. he sold crack, you know what I'm saying? Sold kush and got that, you wanna do the same thing. You got a nigga who poking everybody, he got, he turned up. I want to do the same thing, you feel me? I want to get money too. That's how it go, nigga. Everybody just looking up to somebody. Then you got, like now though, with, the, with this new generation, kids listen to music. And that shit all in the music, you know what I'm saying? Everything in the music. Kill niggas, rob niggas, fuck bitches, get money. You know what I'm saying? That's the shit. I've been living in Mayweather for about, say, 10 years. Like 10 years, I moved to Mayweather when I was like a freshman in high school. My freshman in high school, I came from out west, moved out here, like 03. Freshman and shit. Came to Maywood, thought it was sweet as shit, thought I was coming to the suburb, the white boys ain't gonna even lie. I come out to the town, man, the shit was kinda like, it was mellow for like the first couple months, then I get in tune with a couple niggas I knew from the hood, from out west and shit, you know what I'm saying? They out here in the town with me. You know how that shit go. They show me what. You know what I'm saying? Like they introduced me to the Maywood shit. I'm looking at how this shit is. This shit, same shit where I come from, you know? That shit different. It's smaller. One thing I hear, everybody know each other. You feel me? That way, that's why it's even worse. A nigga, you be cool with a nigga one day, next day, that nigga trying to knock your motherfucking head off. You know what I'm saying? That shit be fucked up because this nigga know everything about you. Every fucking thing about you. Mama, everybody. The nigga murder with Niggas get whacked every fucking day. Kid you not. While we shooting this, somebody probably get shot, or right after this shit, somebody gonna get shot. No lie. Small ass town. Why you think it's like that though? I'm telling you, shit is fucked up, nigga. There's too many high head niggas in the same town, nigga, in one ass, small ass vicinity. It's so small, nigga, on, on every block, nigga. It's 21 blocks, nigga. On every block, you got like, down there two gangs on the same block. You know what I'm saying? That shit crazy. Dude. You got some niggas that's the same gang on one block, but the two with each other. You know what I'm saying? That shit crazy out here. And shit sweet about it. So, I mean, anybody that feels sweet, they come move out here for a minute. See how it is. See if they last. Yeah, man. It's so much shit we see with that, man. I done, I, my, actually, my freshman year in, in the Proviso East. Like, I'm in the East. I see a kid named Kenny get killed. You know what I'm saying? I don't matter. See. That was the first thing I said. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like right when I fresh in Maywood. So, you know, I'm sitting, thinking being right there in the head, like, oh, okay, they out here turned up too. This shit crazy. I, I want to say that same year, or maybe next year, the other one of the students get gunned down, you know what I'm saying? Like, this one, I'm fresh out here though, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm not really knowing what's going on, but I'm just seeing everybody getting gunned down and shit. So, you know what you know what that means? If I'm going to be out here, I got to talk too. You know, the public pit, can't get caught lacking. That's what it is, you know. When I first moved out here, niggas was always calling this shit murder with, but I didn't, I, I ain't know, you know what I'm saying? I ain't know why, I ain't know what the fuck was going on with that shit. I just came out here, thought it was maybe with, thought it was some sweet shit, trying to get out the hood. But this shit even more than hood, you know? Cause it's small. Cause like, how we be in the city, all in one neighborhood, this is a neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it is just like one neighborhood, it's like, these 21 blocks, nigga, you can walk through. You know what I'm saying? You don't really need no car. You know what I'm saying? You can just walk through all this shit. This shit's so small, you know what I'm saying? So what that tell you? Everybody out here got guns. Everybody wanna game bang. Everybody wanna run shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how this shit is out here. So you gotta keep your head up out here. Hey, man, you think things are still the same in Maywood or they change? Change, right there. For the good or bad? If you had one choice, what's the first thing you would change? If I would change, you'd stand in front of the door. Okay. Mr. Fazo East, man. Okay. From Pirates, man. I, was, I seen it all, man. I, I know all the history, man. I know everything that, that came around the way, man. From Doc to Jim to D to Shannon. Now, every time, man. Perry Ellis, Carl Davis, Kenny Davis, the whole family, man. And just the tradition, and that's what made, made me hungry to do what I do now. So, if I was from Maywood, it's fake news, you to see this family, not because some way you know somebody, man. It's a, Maywood is a town where, you know, it's a lot of people, but it's not a lot of people, man. And growing up, man, from Calvin dying when I was in high school, man, to, you know, just 
anybody, PD Dime, man, people who you might not have known, man, people that I grew up with, people that, you know, I look at now that, you know, it, it hurt us, it hurt us as a, as a, as a unity, as a, as a community, because the violence is unnecessary for us, man. There's so many kids out here, we don't know what could have happened with them, because violence takes lives, and unnecessary violence effect over small things, man, and, and it's the same thing in K-Town, you know, I know a lot of guys that, that had futures that, you know, that was unheard of, people don't know what they could have been, but, you know, unnecessary violence is never the key. This is why they call it this, the murder. Hundred <laughs> shot Russian AK-47, goddammit. it. These things I needed out here. You feel me? Period. So, so why, uh, why do you resort to living a life of, you know, the same reason why you picked up that camera? It's a must, goddammit. it. All the violence that's going on in the neighborhood it needs to stop. We got new, you know, we got we're showing new. our younger generation that you know that's all there is. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to show them something better. Okay. You know that we ain't out here to just kill each other, beat each other, rob each other, sell drugs to each other. You know, we need to teach them something. We need Come to on, teach baby. them something better. I'm from front of the house, I'm going to bridge, though. It's, it's that me, but shit. It's what I am, you feel me? It's what I'm going to be, but shit. I, I get that chance to get up out here and, and make something decent happen so I can raise my shorty and my people so I'm up, straight up. Ain't no pump faking in me. I, I ain't gonna sit close for no motherfucker. And motherfucker know what's cracking. And motherfucker know what's going on out here, man. You know, a lot of people move here from, from, from the city or move from thinking that, man, okay, I'm gonna go to the suburb, but this the suburbs, but it's, you feel me, it's my mama. Motherfucker do that to your way they catch you late night. Anytime. You could be in a motherfucking stove. I, I got shot in the phone, so I got shot in the phone stove. Got some shorty, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the phone stove. Finna get a phone. Motherfucker coming that bitch, fry that bitch up. You feel me? I, I get shot in the foot, bro. I'm back decent, back walking, back running, all that shit. Ain't take no time to recuperate, but you know what I'm saying? It'll happen. That was at hey, what, 12, 12 and a half Every male that I went to school with. High school and grammar school, either they did or in jail. My cousins, I lost to a gun battle. He got locked up. His name's Zary. They call him Shorty Thug out here in Maywood or whatever. But you live and you learn. Like I said, when he was a little, when he was little, he don't have that guidance. He didn't have a parent to teach him this and teach him that. So he pretty much, the streets was his parents. So he did everything that the big guys told him to do. He was a game banger. He was out here living his life trying to survive. He got locked up, he went to jail, he came out. He decided to change his life. I'm gonna go to school, get my GED, blah, blah, blah. But you gotta realize that those people that you did something to, back then, is still around here. So he was changing his life, it didn't work. Somebody called him and they shot him nine times. My little cousin murdered him, not soft, not being investigated. They just said, forget it. He was a game banger. We're going to judge him as that. And we're not going to investigate anything he had going on. Even though that his killer is still out here walking free every day, all day. We're just going to brush it off and not pay attention to him. Okay, okay. I had a little homie. His name was X. They called him Xavier, you know. They called him X. And he had a gun one day. That's what the police say, he had a gun. We actually don't know the true story, but they say he had a gun on him. They were the police had shot him two times in his chest. <clears throat> Shit was crazy, man. Like, they just show you, like, he was gonna go to school, all that. But they say he had a gun on him, but the gun never turned up in the case, so we investigating on that right now, but that just to show you, like, ain't nothing around here, like, even the police after you, they ain't gonna serve and protect you. I'm a foe. You see? I'm a foe on her. So, you feel me? Kicking my game. And he killed my brother, you feel me? MG. She's crazy, man. Have, have you been shot before? I've been shot twice. I've been shot. I was paralyzed for a little while. You feel me? You know, the, the last time I got shot when he killed my brother. I was fucked up, y'all couldn't even, I, I had a diaper on and shit. I had a grown diaper on. More, let me do it, you We are at our lowest in violence, shootings, or killings since, it, since I've been working here. Uh, so it's been a success, even though we are shorthanded, 
even though we need some more help, we need some more money. We're in Maywood, but we have to try to work with Bellwood and Broadwood, which is considered the triangle. But we only funded enough to barely work in Maywood. And some of the young men's got some uh, psychological uh, problems, some mental health. And they don't know it because they don't have the resources or they don't have the referrals that they can go see someone. Uh, for example, when someone gets shot uh, in Maywood, you don't, you don't have uh, a social worker to come out and speak to the young men and talk about how they're feeling and what they're going through. They just deal with it. So now it becomes a norm. And that's pretty much what it is. It's a norm of this is the way it's supposed to be. Somebody's supposed to get shot. Somebody's supposed to, and that's not a norm. One of the things that really disturbs me that you can come from Chicago and cross through various uh, uh, suburbs like Oak Park, Forest Park, and hit Maywood and you got a problem. But you can walk right through those other ones don't even have a problem. That's a question that needs to be asked. Now these things are just my opinion. You know, and, and I truly believe that if, if, if we don't do something in the next five years, it's going to be even worse. We just went through this, the George Zimmerman. As you can see, it's all racial profile. So I think if Maywood was majority white people, maybe they'll do something about it. But since we're all black, they don't care about our life. So why not say let, let them kill each other and then we're going to come around here and just buy everything and flood our people with the, in the neighborhood and say forget us. You got to put more extracurricular activities out here. They want to put cameras up. They could have put a whole little better park. They need to do something like that. Because there's kids 16 that's going to 15. They don't know what they're doing. They're going to take somebody's life. Don't even know the consequences of that. Like people need to, you need to wake up, get you some money, stop playing. Who you shooting at? Why you doing it? Man, we gotta start somewhere. We gotta take care of each other. White people look at us like, look at those stupid niggas killing each other. Up. Oh, go ahead. I love it. Yes, I'm on your team. They clapping like LeBron out there anymore. Yes, kill yourself. Shoot yourself. Why you want to shoot dudes? They don't even care. Wanna lock us up? They lock us up and make us kill us. So, we need some help. How you doing? We need to get a hold of the gang bangers or the, or the leaders and find out what is it that you don't like about what's going on in your town. Tell me. Come and talk to me about it so that we can come up with some kind of program to help this situation get better. Because it has to stop before somebody really, I mean, people are getting hurt, people are dying, but before it turns into what Chicago's got going on, we need to bring it close to home and see what we can do about it now before it gets to that point. These niggas over in Division 9 ain't never coming home. Niggas know they ain't never coming home. You feel me? These niggas, niggas down in Minot ain't never come home just off this little town right here. Oh, my mama, it's, it's cracking out here though, for real. Well, they would. It's, it's, it's a ghost town now, because half the guys that I know that grew up with are some of the females I locked up or are dead. Like I said, I lost Brisley, lost my cousin due to gun violence in Maywood. My friend right here, just lost, he lost his brother a past years ago due to gun violence. Like, everybody been affected by some type of violence in Maywood, and eventually, it's gonna be a ghost town. It's gonna be whole new residences out here. So eventually, violence is gonna stop by everybody gonna end up killing themselves or they gonna be in jail. You know, every motherfucker running around here turn out some. Right, what they got them bangers. Generation. They shooters, they killers. Man, niggas be getting them, them stations and motherfuckers be falling on the pressure and, and, and lose their life to the system because they want to be gangsters, man. Like, man, go to school, get that education. Oh. We need more men like Pat Winter mm -hmm. and other brothers in the community who've been touching these young men like uh, Corey Cooper, and Larry Connor, David Goo, Chris Brown, myself, Terry Love. We need, we need help. I got high hopes for many of and I see that, uh, I see the village changing. Uh, coming back, I can never see it really, really being like it was in the 70s and the 80s. That's my biggest vision, but in the neighborhood, it'll take a lot longer than five or six years, but I know that I'll be fighting in the next five or six years along with a couple of other colleagues that I had that'll be fighting with me. You know, couple of soldiers that'll be swinging the sword with me. So I can almost pretty much guarantee that it'll be better than what it is today. As long as I'm alive, I'm willing to lose my life for the children of our village. You have bad living and good living. It's up to you. No one can take anything from you but you. 
And I tell my kids, if you're going to be in the gutter, make sure you put yourself in the gutter so mm-hmm. therefore you can't blame anybody else. Mm-hmm. And if you're in the gutter, you can't help anybody. But if you're standing on the curb, huh. you can reach down and pull the next person up. But that's just, that's just life. We need to do something to get Maywood back to how it used to be and what Maywood was originally supposed to be. Maybe we need to do something as a community to help these people with felonies that's trying to change and so they can, you know, find hope. You know, each one teach one. If we can just, you know, stop being ignorant as a people and come together as one like we used to be. I believe Maywood could be a better neighborhood. I got a lot of love for my city, man. But sometimes I feel like the city don't love me back. A lot of people just don't care. People don't care until it hits their front steps. I said they took the projects down, took niggas out their element. They sent them to the suburbs, something they should have never did. Nope. Walking through this hell on earth, wondering if a heaven's near. Babies killing babies, they dying before they ever live. 18 is first bid, coming home cocky. Beat a couple murders, now he feeling like he rocky. Him and his posse living life fast in the Kawasaki. Said the streets got me, more globby, filling up, up with bodies. This message Some goes time. out to all of my moles, foes, gangsters. Latin kings, BDs, whatever you riding, listen up. Pain. Pain is something that never feels the same. You know, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, or you could even be a so-called lame. But most of the time, I think that we are to blame. You see, I've caused pain to myself all of my life. To myself, to my kids, to my friends, and my wife. But without pain in my life, I wonder just what would I do. I know one thing for sure, I wish that this pain wasn't on me and I wish that this pain was on you. I'd rather some other mother feel the pain that I sometimes go through. I feel this way and I bet you feel this way too. You see sometimes when I experience pain I often wonder why me? Why me? Why couldn't it be Hank, Frank, Joe, or even that man they sometimes call Charlie? But let me tell you something, man. Pain is something that's going to always be around. Sometimes it make us scream, yell, holler. Or sometimes we might just walk around with a frown. But we got to deal with pain. And we can't let it keep us down. Because like I said, pain is going to always be around. Sometimes you might bump your leg, hurt your arm, or it may even stub your toe. But these are just a few examples of pain, you know. But when I feel pain, I wonder when it goes away from me, just where does it go? But there's one thing that I know deep down for sure, that I never want this pain to come back to me no more. And that's peace. And I'm out of here. You know, growing up in Midwood, you know, only made us stronger.